everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. Ryan here to unveil one of the most intriguing stories developing here in 2023, and that is with Aduro Clean Technologies. If you've never heard of it, uh, join the party. Uh, just a couple of months ago, uh, I hadn't heard of this uh, company either, but uh, with their hydrochemolytic uh, technology that they have, a water-based uh, and a chemical deconstruction of plastic waste, it really caught my attention and it prompted me to do some due diligence on this company and realize how big this plastic problem is. And I think this is for all patrons, all stewards of uh, of using plastic. It is in our daily lives. Uh, it, it truly is one of those things that I think we take for granted. And if you're anybody like me, when I understood that the uh, circular plastic recycling economy um, was not uh, made possible by most of the technologies that are available now uh, in the marketplace, it made me focus a lot more on what Aduro brings to the table. And there are a lot of solutions out there right now uh, in the early innings of looking to see what solution is going to be utilized. And I think that most of these solutions are going to have a place. Some of them are being utilized uh, in small scale right now. Some of them are being uh, utilized in some larger applications. The most recent interview that I caught with uh, Ofer Vikas, he spoke to the demand uh, being so large that the industry uh, globally and the demand over the plastic problem and the initiatives to solve the plastic problems could um, employ a hundred Aduros and their competitors uh, to and not even make a dent. So it just speaks to the opportunity here, and it speaks to the importance of these companies that are coming out and in introducing these technologies uh, and boasting their ability to uh, solve the plastic problem or at least step in the right direction in doing so, it really begs the question of uh, execution and who is going to be the one that executes along the lines of um, efficiency and scale up smartly. What uh, Ofer was able to shed some color on uh, was the uh, strategic approach that Aduro has taken to scale in uh, through customer engagements that are scheduled to take place here in 2023. They are going to use uh, their continuous flow reactor, which is their R2 reactor, which is uh, a little bit larger in scale, uh, that they can demonstrate to customers uh, the uh, ability to take in feedstock, plastic feedstock, uh, polyethylene, polypropylene, polyxylene, which are uh, typically the hard to recycle uh, feedstocks in, in plastic recycling. Okay. And they're going to be able to demonstrate this. And these customer engagements, to my best estimate, are could last as much as a couple of months. Uh, and in some cases, maybe even a little bit longer. And I think investors in Adoro or those that are tracking the plastic problem uh, in general are probably in a little bit more of a rush to have this thing solved. Look, I was naive to how big this problem is. The problem is massive, okay? Over 90% of the plastics that's produced uh, are uh, unrecyclable, okay? They are just not economically feasible to recycle, and the problems that play into this are the molecular structure of plastic just being hard to deconstruct and the contaminants that are um, uh, prevalent in once we are done with the use case of the plastic that we discard that. And unfortunately, the residual makes that very, very difficult from a large perspective to introduce that to a reactor and expect that that those contaminants are not going to react against the, the batch and the process that is trying to be maintained as a constant, okay? If we don't know what is going in on the input side, it speaks to the importance of having to sort and or, dare I suggest, clean that feedstock before it's introduced to the continuous flow reactor. Now, I do want to bring everybody's attention to the uh, three major announcements that have been uh, released 
just this year. Uh, I want to recap a little bit. The first being that Aduro provides updates on the joint research initiative with Western University. This was huge. Uh, this was uh, an additional uh, piece of information that came on an existing relationship that they've had where they were awarded some funding. Uh, uh, Aduro was able to kick in on that funding uh, to the tune of about $1.58 million to assist with a, uh, a, a, a project that was aimed at addressing this very contaminants problem because we know that the hydrochemiletic uh, technology has been three, third party verified uh, and we know that it works, okay? Now that we take it to more of an upscale to the would-be customers out there, the idea here is that there could be some learnings to further the efficiencies of the hydrochemiletic uh, in that they can streamline the uh, process on the front end with regard to how they deal with contaminated feedstock, okay? Now, the idea here isn't to get into the technical details. I leave a lot of that to over Vicus, the CEO. We've had the privilege of interviewing uh, Mr. Vicus on the channel here. Um, he's obviously very, very passionate about the Aduro project. And if you want to hear more about that, I will leave the link in the description because it is an absolutely riveting interview where Ofer takes a deep dive into the company initiatives and what they're trying to prove out. They have a strategic direction on where they take this. And this further news here that just broke recently with their initiative with Western University is aimed to add 18 uh, highly skilled uh, uh, scientists onto the team. They've already employed six. Uh, the project lead is very, very happy with the progress and to report out, they speak with uh, Aduro about twice a week on the progress of this. The real cool thing about this is that the learnings are going to add to the portfolio of IP and Aduro, unlike a lot of the other companies out there, which owns their entire portfolio of IP, which should be attractive from an investment perspective, will also augment that portfolio of IP with the learnings that come out of this initiative with Western University. So fantastic news, just another cherry on top of the Aduro story as it evolves, and we will continue to cover the um, developments in that program as the, uh, as the program develops across uh, 2023 and beyond. Uh, the next announcement was Aduro to attend the uh, Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit in India. Why India and why Aduro? Two very, very intriguing questions, and it's going to be fantastic to uh, do a debrief on what Aduro was able to find out over there, what type of potential investors slash clients in a, a an economy that is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. It is one of the most robust, and it's also one of the most populous nations on the earth. And their plastic problem is reflective of the global and also a a, a real utopia of having the plastic problem out of control. So the real takeaway for me was Aduro getting the invite to actually attend this would only further the discussions and get them in front of uh, would-be investors and potential clients that could benefit from the technology in the region. And India, like so many other places uh, in uh, on the globe, uh, with countries that are either underdeveloped and they're taking on too much plastic waste, or developed nations that are frantically looking to offload their plastics and or looking to find those solutions that can give them some level of hope on how they can actually deal with this plastic problem that we have right now. Just to put a, 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 an alarming statistic out there for you guys, around 360 to 380 uh, million metric tons of plastic are produced every year. It's just a staggering amount. I think what even more exacerbates the problem is when we look at what we're looking at into the future by 2050, that figure is, is looking to approach the 1 billion 
metric tons of plastic produced annually. And if we don't start to curb this problem now, then we're, we're going to be in a situation where it's going to be a, a problem that is just too overwhelming. Right now, we can start to introduce uh, some of the lower uh, volumes of, of feedstock. And that's the approach Aduro is taking here with their R2 reactor and the customer engagement. So about 10,000 metric tons per year will give the customers the idea of what the system is capable of doing. It moves the uh, Aduro IP and technology off of the bench testing and actually puts it into a scaled down reactor, yes, but puts the uh, the science to the test in a small scale that can be expected to and easier tested. Ofer Vike has spoke about this in his most latest interview. The large companies out there, they're looking at solutions in, in the 100 to 300 million tons per year. And that in and of itself is only going to put a dent into the total production of a lot of these large companies out there. Aduro is looking to take an intermediate step in engaging with customers and ensuring that they understand the technology, to understand that there are any learnings, any type of augment to the technology that can happen, that that can happen now. And that's a very attractive value proposition for these large companies sitting across from an, an Aduro to say, look, you don't have to come to the table with you know, a, a $500 million investment or a $50 million investment or you know, a, 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 such a huge investment right on the onset. We are not at a stage in the technology's development across this micro sector that we have here in the plastic recycling space to, to boast that any one of these companies have the smoke and gun in way of a solution to garner that type of deal. In other words, large companies are not going to make that huge of a capital investment into a technology that they haven't had the opportunity to verify and double verify is going to work in their specific operations. Ofer talked about the ability to engage with these customers on a small scale with the small reactors, let them understand how it is the solution can fit into their specific applications and then get those uh, initial plants uh, built out, start them working with the eventual down the line of, of, of ramping up on those specific applications. Once they have the validation in place with the technology, then they can upscale uh, both the physical equipment as well as their relationship with Aduro uh, to meet the demand of each respective company that's looking to leverage the Aduro technology. So I, I think it's very, very exciting. It's going to be great to see how the customer engagements go. There's going to be a small amount of top-end revenue that's generated by these customer engagement. I, I think that's great. But if you're looking to Aduro to start to generate massive top-end revenue, I don't think we're in that time right now. I don't. Now, people come to me and they say, well, what is the bear case with Aduro? Well, I can't find one outside of the fact that this company is taking calculated strides. They know that execution is the key to this. They know that their customer engagements are going to be key to prove out to the customers. Aduro already knows their technology works, but to prove out to the companies that they're looking to engage with and share this opportunity with these potential clients and really show them how Aduro can augment those uh, businesses and help them along the lines of solving these plastic problems. And it's one company to the next, to the next, to the next. Once Aduro brings these customers in under their envelope, it's only going to be an, an exercise in winning over new clients and fortifying relationships with existing clients. It's one of the reasons why I'm so bullish on Aduro. And some of my parting words were for Ofer Vikas during his interview on the Independent Investor Channel was quite simply, continue to execute. Um, you're not going to be able to solve this problem overnight. A Duro Clean Technology is not going to be one of those companies that just absolutely blasts off to the hemisphere. I, I think some of the catalysts that we'll speak on in just a moment really does set themselves up for an accelerated uh, path 
toward uh, some material revenues for the company. But until we reach those impasses and those relationships with those customers are solidified, I think it's going to be in the investor's best interest to kind of sit back, monitor this progress, monitor how the R2 is uh, able to demonstrate through engagement uh, how important it, it's going to be to showcase the Enduro technology. And it's going to be really interesting to see those announcements that will I inevitably be forthcoming in 2023 and beyond. But I think we need to be a little bit patient before we start to jump to that. The last announcement that was made here as of late that was Reduro returns to the CEM uh, Alpha North Capital Events Conference in the Bahamas. That was uh, uh, very successful from what I understand. Again, able to showcase the technology, speak with uh, potential investors uh, and and uh, customers alike, and really just put their name out there. A takeaway that I was able to pick up here is that uh, the company's been around for 10 years, but it hasn't been until the last couple of years where they've really started to say, okay, now is the time to really introduce ourselves to the world and I think it's a perfect storm brewing where these companies are stepping forward and saying, hey, we might have something here to render toward at least taking a bite out of this plastic problem and starting ourselves on a path toward remedy. Because guys, right now, marching toward an inevitable fate in 2050 of 1 billion metric tons of plastic produced um, it is 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 a path to destruction. It really is. And by leveraging the technology and starting to really scale into these customers and and showcasing what Aduro and some of these other companies do bring to the table, then these companies can make an educated decision as to which one is going to be the best fit for their respective businesses. And I'll just close on these couple of of points here. In 2023, to monitor the customer engagement piece that Enduro is, is looking to, to fortify, we've already covered the R2 reactor. And as catalysts are made available to me in the open marketplace, I will share those uh, with you guys. Uh, and then to uh, continue to monitor with the Shell Game Changer program. I'm of the belief that Shell did not select Enduro only to end up one year later uh, to part ways. I actually look that at this as a partnership. And although there's not a lot of color around the progress of the Game Changer program, it is safe to presume that Aduro is working lockstep with Shell and the Game Changer program. And the, the renderings from that program are going to be insurmountable. And I think those are going to come inevitably at some point in the not so distant future. I think 2023 is really going to be what I've heard to be a transformational year for Aduro. I, I do foresee some real interesting uh, developments with the financials in the company. Okay. Now, progress thus far, year to date, we're up close to 17% just year to date here. Um, in the last month, we're up 14. The stock just hit an all time high this week. So for me to come on and say, look, we need to recover or, or we need better times in the stock, the stock is performing phenomenal. The stock is out, outperforming every major index out there. And for a microcap space and a company that's valued at just around $50 million, it has absolutely sunk what has been an absolutely horrendous microcap market over the last 12 months. Aduro is doing just fine on the stock side of the house. I think it's going to be incumbent for investors to take a step back, be patient, allow these developments to happen. Allow Aduro and the team that we have all the confidence in the world in into drive shareholder value and do it in the most safe of approaches. Build that shareholder value by executing along a very, very specific business plan and really look to leverage those customer engagements as we enter into 2023. 
Uh, just for full disclaimer, and I've shared this with the group, I still own 17,500 shares of the company. Uh, each of those share buy points are provided in the description below. And I just want everybody to understand that uh, Duro Clean Technologies has partnered with the Independent Investor Channel and has provided me compensation for providing awareness to this company. All those details and disclaimers are provided with open transparency in the description below. Our intent here on the Independent Investor Channel is to pay forward a story that just as of 24 months ago has really stepped into the public domain and has looked to shared this novel technology that they're bringing to the plastic problem that plagues the global, global economy, that plagues all of our major plastic producers. And all of those plastic producers right now are frantically looking for a solution. And I want to leave you with this thought. It will take 100 Aduros to put a dent in this plastic problem that we have. Unfortunately, we only have one. We need to allow these folks to work along a lines of showcasing this technology to the masses. And they need to do it, and they need to do it smartly. And the industry needs to have an ability to sit across from this technology and accept it on a small scale, put it to the rigor, and understand that they can put these reactors into their operations and have the payback be realized over the next coming decades. Because once a, t a, a client is brought on with a Duro, and once the infrastructure is built out, I think it's going to be an absolute game changer for Aduro to have these um, uh, relationships with these customers uh, as they evolve, as they grow, as their feedstock is able to finally realize what we haven't been able to realize over the last hundred years. And that is the circular economy, the ability to take plastic, put it to the technological technological developments that we have nowadays, break those chemicals down and produce a, a, a feedstock on the back end or a, a product on the back end that can be turned into more valuable uh, plastic products for the greater plastic market out there. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in to the message. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Subscribe to the mess if you, if you enjoy videos like this and the content coming through the channel. And finally, share the message with anybody out there that you know is interested in this space. It is absolutely riveting. I will continue to cover with uh, diligence this space and the development specifically with a Duro Clean technology with my greater audience. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.